In today's update, I'll be completing the unfinished area behind these promenade modular buildings, creating a new city wall, adding lights, and explain why there is a big section of the LEGO City packed into a van. So let's get straight to it. With the modular buildings moved out, I add a few small details to the beach. This sits at the back of the harbour and although it's not really visible from the front of the table, I just add a simple palm tree, a few sprouts and a crab. I slide the harbour and water plates back in and move onto the more visible section. This will fill in the gap between the upper and lower levels. I add mills plates at 5 bricks high to sit at the same level as the promenade before adding a row of burps as a stable base for the city walls. The wall is a very simple design. The masonry bricks are inset by one stud behind the decorative archway before the fence is added on top. For some extra detail, a lamp is added to each panel and you'll see those lit up a little later in the video. I replicate the pattern so there are three archways to one base plate with six wall panels in total. To complete the area between the city walls and the back of the buildings, I add tiling using a combination of 1x2 and 2x2 dark grey tiles and 1x1 and 1x2 plates. This area provides access to the promenade outdoor dining area and boat landing so fresh fish can be delivered straight to the diner. There are some delivery guys and cleaners here at the moment and the extra texture on the tiled area makes it really easy to add or change minifigures and the stories at any time. I've added warm white bit lights to the lamps, which does a really nice job of illuminating the alleyway. And so now back to the reason why my Lego city is in the back of a van, well that's because it is going to go on display as an exhibit at a local Lego event over the weekend. So not long after completing the entire area, that meant pulling it all apart and transporting it to go on display for the first time at Bricks in the Hills. It was only about a 15 minute drive and unloading was easy as parking was really close to the venue. There were 30 builders that set up 50 tables of Lego displays and over 1,200 visitors attended. The buzz around Breakwater Bay, which is what I decided to name it for the event, took me by surprise and I really enjoyed talking about it with other builders and all the visitors. It even received the People's Choice Award, which was super nice of everybody and a big thank you to those who supported it. 
But the real highlight for me was meeting all of the wonderful people and seeing how the LEGO community is so friendly and supportive of each other. With the event over, it took about an hour and a half to dismantle, load it back into the van before transporting it back home. After a busy weekend, I decided to just get it all back into the LEGO room and reassemble it the next day. Next stop, Breakwater Bay will also be travelling to Brixbow on the 6th and 7th of July at the St. Clair Recreation Centre in Adelaide. If you live local and would like to see Adelaide's largest fan-built LEGO exhibition, book your tickets. I'll leave a link below and I would love to see you there. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.